It's Amber here at the B Channel, here with another video for you. Today I want to discuss how to do, how to survive the family barbecues and all the family gatherings that are coming up. And um, I thought it was a really timely video, actually, because we, as we all know, this is the big barbecue season in the summertime that's approaching. And um, it can be hard sometimes to get through those family events because the food looks so good and delicious. And you're like, what should I eat? But I'm here to help you. I got your back. I got the game plan for you to stay in shape and to still enjoy some of the foods that you would like to have. So, starting with the first tip. The first tip I would give you is to always, always eat a filling breakfast. Now, there are people out there that say, well, if I'm going to eat, wouldn't it be better if I fasted all day? You know, just like, don't eat nothing and just save all that room in my belly. No, you're setting yourself up for disaster because your blood sugar is so low and you're like, you're going to crave everything because you haven't eaten and you're going to binge. It's going to be a disaster. So the best thing for you to do is eat that filling breakfast. So have a nice heavy breakfast such as oatmeal and a piece of fruit or oatmeal and Greek yogurt. Something that sticks to your ribs. And you'll have better control over your hunger for the rest of the day. And... Because the natural inclination is to fast, to have room for the food, which is something that I used to do too. That was my thinking. That was my strategy back in the day before I learned better. But you know, when you know better, you do better. It makes you binge and get and get full too fast, and it's it's just not ideal. So, your best bet: eat the breakfast, people. Please, your your body will thank you for it. The next step: you want to drink plenty of water and bring a bottle of water with you to drink with you in case they don't have water at the event because when you're drinking the water this will give you give your body anyway give your brain the message that your your stomach is full and when you stay hydrated it's also easier to control your appetite as well so definitely like i always say hydrate 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 it's your best friend next on your phone's memo pad take a quick note of what you're going to eat and the approximate measurement of your serving then record your food and your intake on the app of your choosing such as spark people which is an app that i really highly recommend it has helped me tons i've joined in october and before i joined prior to joining i had lost 25 pounds by myself but after joining i can say as of today i have lost 53 pounds yes 53 pounds so altogether i've lost 78 pounds as of today's weigh-in so i'm happy about that so it works because it's all about accountability and keeping track of the things that you do now the beginning i was like a little bit obsessive like i was tracking everything like sleep and everything like that because I needed to get my body disciplined as far as getting the proper amount of sleep, eating the right number of calories, drinking the right amount of water. But then I was able to rein it back in some and be a little bit less restrictive once I learned how to do it. So now, uh, my my suggestion is to you, if you don't have an app, just write it down so you can get an idea of what you what you actually do eat on a daily basis and what you what your idea of a serving actually is. And that'll give you some perspective about how to move forward. So it's definitely something I would advise, especially for when you're in a setting like that, because it can be easy to get off course. But when you have it written down in front of you and you have to look at it, that's a like that's really a reminder of like, it's an eye opener. Like, wow, I'm eating that much? So really, it's helpful to write it down. That's why I really enjoy the app because you can see, oh no, I'm doing too much. Like, that's too much fat. That's too much sodium. Some scrutiny is good. You have to do it in moderation, though. You know what I mean? Like, don't stress out about every single calorie and every single ounce of food you put in your mouth. But you still have to be accountable. There's a balance here that you have to work on. And that takes time. It really does. I still struggle with it daily. The balance of not eating too many things that will pack on the fat <laughs> that I fear so desperately. But eating things that 
are helpful or nur- or nutritious that you know lend themselves toward helping me reach my goal so eat lots of vegetables and fruit versus lots of fried foods and fattening foods and sugary things so i have to strike that balance every day and try my hardest to succeed and don't beat myself up on days when i have a harder time so um that's the goal there you want to make sure you're writing down what you're doing so you be accountable accountability is key next my next tip now this is very important listen up you want to wait 30 minutes between servings set a timer on your phone and when the time is up you decide whether you're really hungry or not and you make a logical choice based on where you are calorically for the day so if you've been tracking in the past okay you pretty much have an idea how many calories you you eat on a regular basis versus what you eat on a day like that uh, where you have that barbecue and, you know, you're constantly around the food for the day. So, I mean, if you haven't been tracking, then you wouldn't know. But, like, pretty much just make a little mental checklist. What have I eaten today so far? Is this really a wise choice or can I make a better choice? Do I need a whole piece of bread? Can I eat a half piece of bread? Do I have? Can I eat half a cup of something versus a whole cup of something? Or do I need anything at all? Because... That's the time is giving you the, the, the learning is giving you the tool of patience. Because when you wait for something, it lets you decide it lets you decide whether you really need that food or whether you just want it. So it really is helpful because when you wait, I still wait to this day. It helps you decide whether you're really hungry or you just want it because everybody else is eating it. So you have to really decide for yourself. You know, do, is it worth it? Do you really do you really need that food? Or, I mean, if you really need it, then go for it. But you just have to really decide: is it is it worth it? Because <laughs> you you have a, you have goals here, right? You want to lose the weight, not gain it. So decide whether that's worth it to you. And um, another thing that I would say: the next tip: exercise the morning prior to the event. That that morning, you want to rev your metabolism as much as possible. So that way, even if you overindulge, you don't feel guilty. Because, you know, you're human and it will happen. Believe me, it will happen. But you won't feel so bad because you did that workout. You put in your work. So that's your 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 safety net. You you exercise, right? So you can, you can afford extra calories to take some ca- extra calories on board because you expended calories by exercising earlier. So I would recommend doing about an hour of cardio some type of cardio or something to make sure you really rev that metabolism or even do a hit workout that would be great so um definitely like just give it your all <laughs> work out hard you know you want that food because i remember one time it was i knew thanksgiving was going to be like really bad day so what i did was i just decided that i was going to do me do like a 90 minute workout and that way I wouldn't feel bad because I put in that work to so my metabolism is constantly going to be revved for the entirety of that day. No matter what I put in my mouth, the metabolism is going to keep going and I'm going to keep burning calories regardless. So I felt powerful. That that gives you the power to make better choices as well because when you exercise, you're like, okay, I didn't do all that work off of nothing just for me to sit here and pick out no like you actually think more logically when you put in that work every day and you you moving around you expending that energy it makes you think like do i really want that i worked hard i did all those crunches and i'm not going to sit here and like negate that whole workout with this and destroy everything i've worked for like you really gain a sense of pride and you gain a sense of accountability to yourself and what you're going after your goals that you're trying to accomplish like you really do feel strongly about it after a while you've been trying to do it it's it's deep so just think about that all of that <laughs> when you want to overindulge all that hard work all that sweat blood sweat and tears you poured into this goal so those are some things to think about next make your family and friends the focal point don't focus on the food enjoy quality time with them because it's priceless you never know Time tomorrow is not promised, so enjoy the quality time with your family and friends as much as you possibly can. And talking is also a nice distraction from overeating. You can't possibly overeat 
if you're talking to somebody, you don't have time to eat and chew and whatever. You're having a nice little conversation. So that'll take your mind off of it as well. So enjoy the atmosphere of the family and friends and just just try to not to think about food constantly. Try your best, if at all possible. But that really helps to talk to people. <laughs> um, now, for one of the most controversial questions of all, <laughs> should you take that doggy bag? Should you do? Should you do it to go play? And I have I have the answer for you. Um, keep it to one or two. And so, what the to the things that you really enjoy? Those places should consist of things that you really enjoy. And realize that the same food that you love will be there next year. And more is readily available. Because sometimes we have this this scarcity mindset that, oh no, like there's going to be no more of this left if I don't eat all of this right now. And I will never find, I will never find any more of this food. Like, or it's so good, I don't know when the next time I'm going to have it is. That's kind of like how they were back in the day. And, um... Like in caveman times, there was a scarcity mindset. They didn't know how much or when they would have the food. So it was hunting and gathering. So everybody was like trying to fight for their food, you know. So now we we haven't been socialized to think differently. Like we, we're, not, we're not in a different mindset like we need to be. That food is readily available. Like you can't go to the store and get more. It's fine. Like there, as long as God... You know, as God's will is in place, as long as he reigns over this earth, there will be more, you know. So don't fret over that macaroni and cheese and that sweet potato pie or them ribs that you, you, you know, you cherish. There will be more next year. God willing, if he, if he allows them to live there, they will be there next year to create their recipe just for you. So just think about it like that and it'll help a little bit to alleviate the the fear of not having enough food or not ever, not being able to experience it as much as you would like. So um you know, you have a goal in mind. So think about that goal. Have that goal in the back of your mind consistently. Don't obsess, but just be conscious and keep the uh, right keep the right perspective about this thing. You want to lose weight, so there's some things you're going to have to sacrifice. There are, you're going to have to think about your serving sizes. You're going to have to think about um, how often you're eating. You're going to think about what you're eating. So take all these things in mind. Keep all these things in account. But try your hardest not to obsess. I know it's hard. It's so hard. It really is hard. Believe me, because I, I struggle every day with trying not to obsess about it. But... I'm telling you, the struggle is worth it. You have to struggle to get to to get to success. There is no success without struggle. So, when you struggle and you get through to the other side, you'll be that much more grateful for your reward. So, just keep that in mind when you're struggling at these family gatherings and you're wondering, how am I going to make it? How am I going to succeed at this weight loss thing? It's possible because I've done it. So, to reiterate, when you're at a family gathering or you're preparing for your family gathering, make sure you eat a filling breakfast because that'll set the tone for the rest of the day as far as how you're going to be eating and how you're going to be feeling as far as hunger. You'll have better control over your appetite. You won't binge. You're less likely to binge, I should say, because you are human. Number two, drink plenty of water. Bring a bottle of water with you. Have water at all times. You don't want to be without your water because <laughs> that's like your, your, your handyman tool. You know, like your, like handyman have a tool belt, water, that's always in your tool belt. Number three, write down what you've eaten. Track it somehow. I don't care if it's an app or you're just writing it down on pen and paper. You need to be tracking what you are eating, being accountable for your choices. And that's the only way to be accountable is to look at it and to physically see it, visually see that you are eating this, that, and the third. Then, number four, you want to wait 30 minutes between servings to see if you really want that food or not. Do you need that second serving of ribs or macaroni or whatever it may be? Then you'll be able to make a logical choice to eat less of something or nothing at all. So, that's, that's what the 30 minutes is truly about. It's not about depriving yourself. It's about delayed gratification to see if you really indeed do 
need that food or do you just want it? The next tip, exercise the morning of to rev your metabolism so you won't feel bad if you overindulge. That's your safety net. That's your insurance. Exercise before. Then feel free to eat what you would like within reason. And you're good. And, you know, next, 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 make sure you make your family and friends the focus of the event. Don't focus on the food. Distract yourself by talking so you won't overeat. Because that's another thing. People tend to multitask too much when they're eating. So it's like mindless. And you don't know how much you're actually eating of something. So focus on eating when you're eating. And then when you're talking to people, don't eat. I don't know if that makes any sense. But that's just really, it's basic. Like, it's basic, you know, how to not overeating. Focus on eating. Be mindful about eating and chew the food and enjoy it and just really savor it you know don't just gobble it down you know because then you're it's like you didn't even taste it you didn't even eat so just think about that too as well when you're you're enjoying your meal actually enjoy it (laughs) then last but not least to go plates keep it to one or two you don't want like 10 plates at your house and it's like calling your name and besides food is only good for a look like three or four days anyway in the fridge you don't want to eat it any longer than that anyway so just like be mindful of your choices you don't want to waste no food and you don't want to overeat so don't tempt yourself with more than one or two plates just keep it to foods that you really enjoyed at the event and realize that scarcity is not is not truth that's all in your mind there will be more next year there will be there's more at the grocery store it's okay so those are my tips of surviving a family gathering. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you haven't already, I pray that you will comment below and let me know how you're feeling about this channel and about these videos and I pray that you will subscribe and follow me and most of all I pray that everything goes well with you and that you're actually enjoying your journey, that you're learning something from these videos that they help you in some way and that I pray that you just Love yourself, be kind and gracious to yourself, and never forget how special you are to God and that you're valuable in his sight and that you are loved by him no matter what your weight and no matter what you do today or any other day. Nothing you can do can make him love you any less or any more. So just remember that and just love on yourself. That's the most important thing. Love on yourself and exercising and eating right is part of loving yourself so just stay committed stay the course don't give up don't give in and i'll see you next time here at the b channel thanks for watching god bless